So hello and good evening or good afternoon. This is Ruth Basolo from Curval.com and today is time again for another DAX Fridays. And uh, we are going to talk about today the function called calculate table. So if you're new to that function, it's extremely, extremely useful to filter tables. Follow me along on this tutorial in just a second. Okay, so this was actually requested by one of you that asked me, okay, could you do a video on when to use calculate table or when to use filter? And I was going through all my DAX functions in the DAX glossary and I realized that I haven't done calculate table. So I thought uh, I'm going to start with calculate table first and then I will do another video with, you know, when to use calculate table or a filter and what is the difference between them. But today, Calculate table, extremely useful function. It allows you to create intermediate tables. It allows you to create the tables on the fly that you can then use to do other types of calculations. So you can calculate, um, you know, get a table, filter it by whatever conditions that you have and then do other calculations on it. And that is exactly what we're going to do in today's video. So stay tuned because we're going to jump into Power BI right now. And I'll see you at the end, by the way. Okay, so here we are in Power BI and uh, we're using the Northwind dataset that we always use. If you want more details about that, if you're new to the channel, just go to Northwind Traders and this link, you know, we will have this file available for download and you have a tutorial on how to use this. So before we proceed, let's do like we always do. We go to the Microsoft documentation and uh, see what they say about calculate table function. It says evaluate the table expression in a context modified by the given filters. So you have a calculated table, you have an expression here, you have a filter and a filter and a filter. So you can add as many filters as you like. Again, the difference between calculate and calculate table is calculate table will return a table while calculate returns a value. And uh, what they say here is the expression, there are restrictions to what this could be. It cannot reference a measure and you cannot use nested calculate. So it cannot use a function that scans a table, so it returns a table. So you need to have a table here, but you can generate a table and we will do an example. And then they go through um, so an, an example of how that could use, which we're going to go through now. Let's go back to Power BI. Okay, so here in Power BI, we have a table. This is how it looks like. We have orders, customers, calendar, products, and categories. And uh, I can see this is done the old fashioned way. This is an old file, I should change that. So we don't have bidirectional everywhere. Anyhow, um, if we go here, what we're going to do is create a table that will give us the order IDs where the order fright is over a hundred dollars or, or crowns or euros, whatever. And the ship method is ship method three. So if we look at that table, we go to orders. We want to have where the fright is over a hundred. Let's say that is this euros and the ship method is three, okay? So we are going to calculate a table and then we're going to calculate the freight costs. So how much we paid when it cost over a hundred. Just, just an example, so you can see how this is done. Perhaps not the best example in the world, but because calculate table returns a table, we can only do that by doing a new table. So here we go, we create calculate and uh, we start with calculate table. The first is the expression. You, what you need here is a table. So what table do you want calculate table to filter on? And you can either create that table or you just give a table that you already have. For this example, we're going to give the orders table, the entire table. And then we're going to say, I want to have it where the order fright is over 100 euros and the uh, order, you know, this is so annoying. It thinks that this is a comma when it's not. 
So I have to put a space here and then it starts to work again. Okay, ship via... And we want to have this three. Let's say that this is airplane or something. I, I don't know. And this little thing is going to give us a table where the freight, the costs of the shipment is over a hundred euros and the method is of shipment is three. You can see it here. So ship is three and freight is... This is very useful, right? And then you say, okay, but now we want to calculate the sum of so how much cost, how much we have paid when it's over a hundred. Let's say that we want to do that. So what you will do, you copy this little thing that we just created. You go to the order table where we want to place this measure. And we say costs of fried over, perhaps we could have count orders where the fright is over 100. It would be more a better exercise, but anyhow, you can calculate absolutely anything. The point is, you know, to show you how to do it. So here you have the sum x, because that is going through the table. Which table? The table that we just created. Okay, so we're given sum x. If you don't know how sum x, I have a video on that. But you can give you give some x the table we just created and then we say sum the shipping costs. And that will create the measure for us. Fourteen thousand five hundred and ninety euros we've paid when it is over a hundred. And if we this is the calculate table we did. So we can just check that everything is okay by seeing that we get exactly the same results, which we get. So it is calculating correctly. Make sure you always verify your measures so you know that they are calculating what you think they're calculating. So as you can see, it's, it's like super simple and extremely useful because it allows you to calculate tables that are not there to make other calculations. So this is like virtual tables or intermediate tables to be able to actually get the number that you want. Um, as you can see on the um, uh, documentation from Microsoft, it said that calculate, let's see, calculate the table. It actually said that this is an expression on a table. In the first example, we use a table, but you could actually have a function. For example, let's say we don't want to feed the entire table to calculate table. We just want to give it, I don't know, order fright, order ship, and order ID. We don't want to feed the entire thing. Just as an example, you could do absolutely anything in here. So now you have a function that gives a table instead of giving the entire table. And then you can do exactly the same thing. You can say order fried over 100 euro. Ouch. And order... Oh, so annoying, so annoying. Order... And you'll see the difference. So this is the, uh, let's see where they went. This should be calculate table zero. So this is the original one that we created and you see it returns the entire table back, everything where the cost of the shipment is over a hundred and the ship method is three in the other one that we did, the calculate with summarize, it just returns, because we just fit the function only three columns, it just returns those three columns. So, I mean, that's the way that you can actually modify calculate table. And was, that's why they say that it's an expression instead of a table. You can actually feed a table in there that suits what you need to calculate, okay? Or to be filtered. So calculate table basically filters a table the way you want it and you can actually feed any table in there.
So hopefully this is useful. So what do you think about the calculate table? It is a fantastic function, isn't it? It's going to help you to do all kinds of advanced calculations and it is not that hard really, you saw it. So, um, this is all for today for DAX Fridays, but on Monday I am going to continue with the GDPR series. This is a video that I was actually going to do this week, it's been already recorded and everything, but due to the fact that the Power BI team released the new May update, have you check it? I have made two videos about it, make sure you check them out. I decided to just pause that and do it next week. So on Monday, we're actually going to go through a functionality in PowerBI.com that is called auditing. It's extremely useful to know who is doing what in Power BI. And it actually very, very useful for documenting, you know, what happens with your data in Power BI in case uh, there is, I don't know, data breach or you need to understand how people are using the data sets. Extremely, extremely useful. And that is on Monday. So make sure you don't miss it. If you missed the GDPR video, make sure you check it out. Is uh, I go through the white paper uh, that Microsoft team did on GDPR with Power BI. So hopefully that will, you know, help you understand and get a step further into complying to that law. With all that said, I'll see you on Monday. Have a fantastic weekend. Bye.